for Around the Ozarks in 5. Brought to you by the Butterfly Palace and Rainforest Adventure, Adventure Cave Tours, and Talking Rocks Cavern. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. That's us. It's Monday. Hope your weekend was great. Uh, and uh, we're going to get started on a Monday with some news. A record high state budget is headed to Governor Parson's desk for his signature. The almost $51 billion budget includes a massive expansion of Interstate 70 across nearly the entire state and is actually bigger than what the governor was talking about back in January. This would add a third lane to I-70 from Kansas City to St. Louis. It'll also include some money to plan a future expansion of I-44. The state's fiscal year begins July 1st. We drive I-44 quite a bit, and I just don't like Interstate 44. I don't know why, but I feel like I'm on pins and needles the whole time because it seems dangerous. Well, there's a lot of curves, there's a lot of hills, and there's a lot of trucks. It's it's a. I was just talking with somebody over the weekend about this very thing. The, the drive to Kansas City is so much more enjoyable. Uh, and easier than the drive to to and from St. Louis. Uh, it just is. Yeah. Um, speaking of the budget, the Springfield area has a lot to gain in this budget proposal that has passed the state legislature and, again, is waiting for Governor Parson's signature. Uh, the budget would include $8 million to renovate the Jefferson Avenue footbridge, $5 million for a new youth mental health clinic in Springfield, Four million for the Jordan Valley Community Health Center, and two and a half million for a bridge at Fellows Lake, among some other expenses. Part of the spending is because of the surplus, as you know, of more than five billion dollars. Yeah, they, they they're going to spend it. <laughs> they want to spend it. Uh, boy, uh, weather real quick. This this week is going to be warm. We've got a chance for rain and storms like every day this week. It's not a huge chance, but it's. It's in the forecast. Uh, but then it was, boy, it was hot on Saturday, wasn't it? I love the heat. It got so to I don't even notice warm. that it's we, hot. I just, I just love it. I just feel right at home. We sat out in the sun for a while, and I, I think each of us and our kids got, uh, got some sun on Saturday, and it yeah. heated up in a hurry. Uh, 85 for the high today, by the way. Uh, apparently, a lot of people are very interested in the future of the Lake Springfield area. That's evidenced by hundreds of people showing up in person to an informational public meeting here recently. Uh, that comes after the power station was decommissioned and the smokestacks were uh, very publicly knocked down. Uh, the biggest issues people are concerned about in that area now, traffic, safety, accessibility, and pollution. Mercy, I'm excited it, about that area. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it has a lot, a lot of potential. And the... the uh, the trail system is going to connect to Ozark. Is it already connected or not? Uh, no, not fully. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be cool. Uh, Mercy is adding a new clinic in Springfield. Uh, today is the groundbreaking for the new clinic located on the second floor of the Frisco building there on East Chestnut Expressway, right, right close to 65. Uh, the clinic will have primary care providers as well as some doctors focused on kids and uh, some for the elderly. Occupational medicine, uh, as well as therapy providers, will also be available at that clinic when it's completed at the Frisco building on Chestnut Expressway. Uh, congratulations to Brandy Harris, CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Springfield. She's been named Executive of the Year by the Boys and Girls Clubs of America Professional Association. Mrs. Harris has been the CEO of the Springfield Clubs since 2019. So congratulations to her. Yeah, That's exciting. Her. Um, okay. Springfield is getting a second Michael store. It is headed to the Springfield Plaza shopping center on the West side of town, right by sunshine and West bypass. Michael's other location of course is on East independence street. And then they also have stores in both Branson and Joplin. That's arts and crafts, right? Uh, yeah, no, I'm not at my alley. I think I've been in Michael's once in my life, but I know that it is popular among crafters. Yeah. Your mom likes Michael's. I know that my mom used to torture me by making me go to Hancock fabrics <laughs> and, um, Hobby Lobby and Michael's. And there was another one, um, in our small little town anyway, um, when you were a kid. When I was a kid and 
she just loves all of those stores still to this day, loves all of those stores and I want to love them, but I don't have an inner, an inner crafter that, that doesn't exist in me. So I am already made there. I've seen them. I've seen them. They look nice. <laughs> That's that would be me by a pre-made scrapbook. That sounds perfect, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, OK, Burger King is closing down uh, between 300 and 400 locations across the country by the end of the year. No word on whether any local stores will be affected by the closures. Uh, just since January, though, 124 Burger King locations have shut down in the U.S. Uh, they're still they still have quite a few, uh, so don't worry. But right now, there are more than 7,000 locations still operating, but another 300, three to 400 going away. And this went away as well. The scoreboard at Missouri State University's Plaster Stadium is now gone. It was torn down to make way for a new scoreboard uh, to be installed sometime later this year. Uh, probably before the first home game, which we know will be on September 23rd against Utah Tech. The Bears against Utah Tech. Go Bears. Uh, this is fun. Silver Dollar City is number one theme park in the U.S. Yeah. As voted by readers of USA Today. Uh, they finished in second place to SeaWorld Orlando over the last couple years. So congratulations to SDC for now claiming the top spot. Yeah. And not getting beat out this year by SeaWorld Orlando. Uh, that means that the Springfield area has the number one theme park in the U.S., as well as the number one aquarium, of course, at Wonders of Wildlife. So not too shabby for our yeah, area. I love it. I mean, that's really impressive. I know it's a vote of the people, but the people have spoken. And uh, two of those in one small, relatively small town area. That's pretty cool. A and you're going to Silver Dollar City today. Aren't you on your way right after this? Today is the day. Today is the day. Yes. Um, it is a end of year, end of school year celebration for my oldest daughter's class. So I am the chaperone because oh. they pick the funnest parent. I was going to say. Course, right. That's a, that's a tough that chaperone a gig. You get, you get to go to Silver Dollar City. Other people had to go. Uh, when it was mortuary day and, and uh, go visit a morgue or whatever they do for other, <laughs> other field trips. I don't know what they do. Um, I feel like surely they chose me because I'm so much fun. Right. Pro I yeah. Mean, yeah. I'm, I'm goes have no saying, doubt. Right. Yeah. I have I no doubt. Like that's gotta be it. I'm just hopeful, honestly, that there's no lines because a lot of schools are still in session, but ours. Yeah, there shouldn't be. And the threat of rain. Tomorrow. Yeah. Threat, threat of rain, you should be golden. Yeah. Uh, threats of rain, yeah. But it's kind of hit and miss, and it's not a super high percentage. So I feel like it's not going to be a washout or anything. We'll see no, if I'm right about but it, that. But it could be enough when people look at the forecast to see it and think, ah, oh, today's not the day. Right. This are you going to read sir. the last story? Go ahead. No, you You are. want me to? Oh. Well, you said uh -huh. you were. Uh, if you're looking for some fun this week and you like beef... <laughs> then the Missouri, the Missouri beef days is for you. That's going on right now in Bolivar through Saturday of this week. Uh, they've got events all week long, uh, a rodeo parade and ag expo concert is scheduled as well. So it's a big deal. Last an entire week wrapping up this week on Saturday. It started last Saturday, I believe. Uh, if you're interested, visit Missouri beef days, Dot com and you can see the schedule, but there is a lot going on. I imagine there's some brisket available. Speaking of brisket, you sir, wanted you like, me to know. Would listen. you listen? Do you have anything you'd like to add on brisket? Um, Ethan made the best brisket known to mankind this weekend. It was phenomenal, and it's hilarious because he wanted to read the Missouri Beef Days story as a softball to me to set him up for the compliments. But I will tell you that even without the story, I would have complimented the chef because I will give compliments where compliments are due folks. And well, I married you, a chef as it turns out. I tell you this, uh, I appreciate the kind words, uh, but uh, brisket is very, uh, very intimidating to me. I've only made a few in my life, but this one over the weekend was the, the best brisket I've made. Everything just, it was like Xanadu. Everything worked out perfectly for me. The timing, because 
uh, I got up in the middle of the night and I checked it and it was right at the, the right at about the right temperature to foil it. So I wrapped it up good. Then in the morning I was getting up or I, actually Sarah called and woke me up because I had, I forgot that the boy had a soccer game that I had to get him to. So now I'm freaking out because I'm like, if this isn't, if this isn't ready, I'm going to have to leave the soccer game and come back when it is ready. But it was, uh, the temperature was 203 for one of them. I did two, 203 for one of them and 201 for the other one. You pull them at 203. So I cranked up the heat a little bit, got the second one to 203, bam, put it in a cooler and uh, let it sit there uh, and, and stay warm and finish cooking. And uh, it turned out really, really well. And then I was at Pits and Grills, that store on Sunshine. Nice, nice folks over there. Uh, they always helped me out. They gave me good rub to put on my brisket. And then they gave me the best barbecue sauce that I think I may have ever had. It is what, do you remember what it's called? Uh, what is it? It's on my phone. I took a picture of it. It's, I think it's called meat. It's a Kansas city place actually. Yeah. It was pretty yeah. tasty. Oh, it's called meat Mitch M E A T Mitch. And, uh, it is barbecue sauce. It's fantastic. It, it works with that brisket so well. Uh, so I enjoyed myself eating a lot this weekend. You will be happy to know that when his alarm went off at 3.30 in the morning to get up and check the temperature of the brisket, that I thought it was my alarm to get up to go run with my friends, which goes off at 4.30. And I didn't yell or complain or scream at him for waking me up an hour before my alarm because I love him and I was appreciative of his commitment to making a good brisket. And then you tasted that brisket. And it was I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I wanted to complain about you to my friends, but I chose not to because I was just thankful for a husband who gets up at 3.30 in the morning to check the temperature of the meat. That's what that's I do. That's commitment, folks. That's what, that's commitment what I do for, like. That's what I do for my family. <laughs> and uh, I've already got some uh, pork butts. Uh, for next weekend. So I'm, I'm going to be cooking them up. I'm on a roll. Nice. nice. I'm on a okay. Roll. All right, folks. Happy Monday, everybody. Yep. Good we'll luck. see you Good on the uh, start of another week. We'll see you on Tuesday, Tuesday, Bye. Tuesday morning, Missouri. Bye.